Let's consider how to add the sign up functionality to our simple Node.js authentication backend. So far, we've initialized the project, connected it to a Mongo database, and got it to start using Nodemon. For the main features of the application, including sign up, we'll group them in a domains directory. The sign up feature will be under the user domain. In this domain, we first need a model for our user. The model will describe the structure and the kind of data that will store about a user. To do this, we need the Mongoose package that we installed earlier and the schema class from Mongoose. The structure of the data is called the schema, so we create one for the user using the schema class. We expect the user to have a name which will be a string property. Also, we expect an email which will be a string and a unique property. In addition, the user will have a password and a token, both of which are strings. The token will be a unique string which expires and will be assigned to each user for authorization purposes. In this project, our tokens will be generated using the JSON web tokens. You can go on and add more user properties based on your needs. Now using Mongoose, we create a user model by passing it a chosen name and the schema. We then export the model. Now let's set up the sign-up route. The route being the exact endpoint that will receive the request. We will do that in a route file. Here we import express and use it to initialize a router. Using the router, we create a post route for sign-up and pass an async route handler, which will receive the request and response parameters. Now starting with the expected user inputs, we destructure them from the body of the request. We then go ahead to trim them off any white spaces. Now some quick validation stuff. First, let's check if any of the inputs are now or undefined. If that's the case, we throw an error with a message. Also, we test the name to see if it contains only alphabets and a possible white space when a full name is provided. Otherwise, we throw an error. You can find the regular expression in the video description. We also want to validate the structure of the email using another regular expression, which is also in the description. If it fails, we throw an error. Lastly, we check if the password is too short. Let's say you want the password to be 8 characters or more. If that's not the case, we throw another error. Now if none of these fail, we have good credentials and we can proceed to create the user. Now as part of keeping our code clean and simple, we want to assign the user creation to a function that will be in a controller file. In the controller, we will create the user in a simple async function, which we will expect to receive some data. In this function, we start by distracting our values from the data. Now we want to ensure that the user we are about to create doesn't exist already, so we import the user model. Now using the user model, we search for the existing user based on the email. If we get a positive result, we throw an error that the user already exists. If that's not the case, we want to hash the user's password and add it to the other details to be stored. Now we'll be hashing data a few more times in this project, so let's dedicate a file to this purpose. We will store this file under utilities in the source directory. Now for the hashing, we'll be using the BigQuery package that we installed earlier and we'll handle the hashing using a simple async function. To this function, we'll pass the data to be hashed and a sort round value which will be 10 by default. Now we get a hashed value using BigQuery by passing the data and a sort rounds. We then return the result which is the hashed data. If we catch any error while doing this, we throw it back to the function that called hashed data. We then ensure to export the function. Continuing our work in the controller, we import the hash data function. We then use the function to hash our user password. Now we create an instance of a user and pass it the name, email, and the hashed password. We then proceed to create the user by saving the record. After that, we return our created user. In the case of any errors while doing this, we throw them back. Now we export the controller function in an object. This will allow us to export more functions later. Now back in our route file, we import the createUser function. 
we get the new user data back in a JSON format by passing it all the data that we have. We then respond to a successful request by passing the user data as a JSON object. The status of value 200 just gives the signal that everything is fine with the request. If any errors were thrown, we catch them here and send an error response with a message of the error. After everything, we export the router. Now we need to take a series of steps to expose the sign up route to the main app so that I can start receiving requests. So starting in the user domain, we need an index file. In this file, we import our user route from the route file and export it again. Now in the source directory, we add the subdirectory for routes. In this will be an index file as well. Over here we import express and initialize the express router once again. Now we import the route for our user domain. Since we have an index file in the domain, we can just specify the domain name. Now we tell the router to assign the user path to our user routes. After that, we export the router. Continuing the app file, we import the routes. Now we specify the initial path for our endpoints and tell the app to apply the routes. We can use the path here to apply some versioning to our backend. While the server is still up and running, we can create a push request in Postman and supply the endpoint to sign up. The endpoint starts with localhost and the port, followed by the initial path in the app file, the path assigned in the main routes index file, and finally the path assigned to the route in the domain routes file. When we provide an object of data in a JSON format, we can send a request. If everything is fine, we should get the user data back and it can be found in the database as well. This works fine so we can save and commit the changes in our code. We will build on this to implement the login functionality next. However, if you want to take a shortcut, a link to the full source code will be in the description.